Well, good morning. Everyone, this is Dr. Tom Schleter, and this is today's Tom's Take. As I mentioned yesterday, uh, I believe I'm supposed to start doing this daily, at least for a season. And so here I am again with you this morning, and I appreciate you watching and listening and praying along with us from Texas. I first, though, want to say thank you, my friend Dutch Sheets, uh, for highlighting uh, the prayers that we are doing right now, not only for Minnesota, but for other states around the nation, as he's given us this uh, exhortation and commissioning to release God's blessings across the other 49 states. And so we just take this word very humbly and very seriously that we're going to call forth what needs to come forth from these states. Now, I promise this, this is not the newest edition, but this was my first one that I bought. And if you looked at it carefully, you would see it's well-worn. It's the per releasing the prophetic destiny of the nation. It is an invaluable resource in looking at what the Lord has prophetically spoken over your state, or if you're praying for other states to see what the Lord has spoken over that state, as I did yesterday, and will continue to do with Minnesota and other states. And so uh, please make sure you get that. The newest edition has a portion that has been added by Dutch's brother, uh, Tim Sheets. This morning, um, as I do my daily routine of uh, reading through the scriptures and my prayer, and then we have our TXAPN conference call every morning uh, for 15 minutes. Uh, we've been doing that now for many years, about the same timing that uh, Dutch got the, his word about giving 15. And I was preparing as I was reading through that just to say, well, Lord, he had already given me some thoughts and some of my own thoughts about this morning. But my daily reading today was in John chapter 11. And it's a very familiar passage. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, verse 33. I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation. The context of the story is going to be familiar because it's when Jesus finally arrives at Bethany having already received word that Lazarus had turned sick and he had announced to his disciples, don't worry, he's just asleep. And then he has to make it even clear, no, he has died, but it's gonna bring forth the glory of the Lord. Now, I'm not gonna to go to the first part of that story uh, where he's speaking with Mary, I mean with Martha. I wanna pick up where he now is talking to Mary. When Mary finally found Jesus outside the village, she fell at his feet in tears and said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus looked at Mary and saw her weeping at his feet and all her friends who were with her grieving, he shuddered with emotion and was deeply moved with tenderness and compassion. He said to them, where did you bury him? Lord, come with us and we'll show you, they replied. Then tears streamed down Jesus' face. Seeing Jesus weep caused many of the mourners to say, look how much he loved Lazarus. Yet others said, isn't this the one who opens blind eyes? Why didn't he do something to keep Lazarus from dying? Then Jesus, with intense emotions, came to the tomb a cave with a stone placed over the entrance. Jesus told them, roll away the stone. Then Martha said, but Lord, it's been four days since he died. By now his body is already decomposing. Jesus looked at her and said, didn't I tell you that if you will believe in me, you will see God unveil his power? So they rolled away the heavy stone Jesus gazed into heaven and said, Father, thank you that you have heard my prayer, for you listen to every word I speak. Now, so that these who stand here with me will believe that you have sent me to the earth as your messenger, I will use the power you have given me. And with a loud voice, Jesus shouted with authority, Lazarus, come out of the tomb. Then in front of everyone, Lazarus, who had died four days earlier, slowly hobbled out. He still had grave clothes tightly wrapped around him, his hands and his feet and covering his face. Jesus said to them, unwrap him 
and let him loose. I want to continue in decreeing some things over Minnesota, but I want us to learn also to do what Jesus did with the authority that his father had given him and that Jesus has now given us authority to do. He's given us authority to call something forth that was dead or even looks dead. It was really amazing on this morning's call, our focus was on the Supreme Court and then all of a sudden, a man by the name of Ted just interrupted our call, it was a good interruption, and asked us to pre please pray for his son, Ted, who had sepsis in his leg and was probably gonna have to have it amputated. And you could hear the cry of a father wanting his son's leg to be restored and healed. So we just all began to cry out and declare, yes, be healed. And I continue to do that. Come forth healing. There is something in this passage. I, I would encourage you to go and meditate on it. Linger in it. Because it's not just a mighty miracle of Jesus that is being released, showing that he is indeed the, the Lord of life, that he is the resurrection and the life. But it's also giving us a clue and a mandate that we too can look at something that looks dead, that looks as though it has sepsis, that is filled with disease, that it can't live anymore, that if anything, it has to be cut off. It, it just, it's worthless. We can say that about a lot of things right now. We can say it about our government structures. We can say it about uh, certain issues that are taking place within the church where it has become very uh, complacent and lukewarm. Or we could say it to a state like Minnesota, or maybe Wisconsin, or Utah, or Arizona, or Georgia, or Michigan, or New York, or California, or maybe your state. Because so we have a tendency, and of course it's obvious why we have a tendency, is we look at these states and we see them deteriorating before our eyes. States that used to be mighty and beautiful and had great plans and great destinies taken over by a system which has caused it to self-destruct in before our eyes. And in many cases, we've already laid some of these states in the tomb and wrapped it up and said, that's just the way it goes. No. There was a phrase in the passage where it tells you that the people that were there grieving with Mary and Martha looked at Jesus and said, oh my goodness, surely this one dearly loved Lazarus. Jesus dearly loves our states and our nation. He dearly and compassionately calls it to come back to life. And he is instructing us today to do the same. The phrase very short that has been in my spirit ever since the Lord started putting this into my heart this morning was simply this, come forth, come forth. It's one of the most powerful decrees that Jesus made in his ministry. He decreed many things. He decreed the casting out of demons out of the demoniac there on the shores of uh, the Sea of Galilee. He decreed healing and health and the restoration of eyesight and brought forth people from the dead. He decreed forgiveness over a woman caught in adultery. He decreed life. He decreed hope. He decreed forgiveness. And now he has said, Ecclesia, you are my representatives. You represent me on earth. So now go and do the same. Cut, say and decree, come forth. If you see darkness, say, come forth, light. If you see curses, come forth, blessings. And as you look at your state, maybe your county or maybe your city, and you're weeping over it, 
You're crying over how it has fallen into disarray. The prophet Isaiah spoke that we are going to be the ones that rebuild the old pathways and the old walls that have been torn down, so let's get busy doing it. And God has given us a very simple, instructive way of doing it. He's given us as sons and daughters of the Most High God, as kings and priests, a very simple task, but filled with powerful authority. So I say again to Minnesota today, come forth. Come forth into your destiny, Minnesota. Come forth into your destiny, Michigan. Come forth into your destiny, California, San Francisco. Come into your, come into your destiny. Come forth, New York and New York City. Come forth. Decree with me right now as you're listening to this. Decree, come forth over what you see has been already wrapped up, placed in the tomb, and we've just said enough is enough. They're dead. We can't do anything for them anymore. But wait a minute. Jesus, surely he has shown us how much he weeps for them and how much compassion he has for them and how much love he has for them. And so must we. So call them forth. Come forth awakening. Come forth revival. Come forth restoration. Come forth the healing of states and nations and and cities and towns and communities and, and counties. Come forth. Come forth schools. Come forth. Come forth media. You're looking dead. You're looking useless. Come forth into your destiny as true communicators of truth. Come forth, government of the United States. Come forth, White House. Come forth, Congress. Come forth, Supreme Court. Come forth into all that you are meant to be. Come forth. Join me this morning. Join Texas this morning. Join the Ecclesia of the nation this morning. Don't be afraid. Don't give up. Don't hand this over as another victory for the enemy. The enemy's not going to win this. God's kingdom come. God's will be done. Come forth. Y'all have a blessed, blessed day. And I'll be back with you tomorrow.